Welcome to this module on CGE Microsimulation Modeling for Distributive and Poverty Analysis. In this module, we will talk about the top-down approach. There is a growing interest in combining Computable General Equilibrium CGE, models and Microsimulation MS, models for assessing the effectiveness of pro-poor macroeconomic policies. CGE models address macro and sectoral issues such as growth, employment, earnings, etc. However, CGE models do not capture issues related to income distribution, inequality, and poverty as MS models do. MS models focus on individual and household levels distributive effects but fail to capture the general equilibrium effects and the macro and sectoral effects of policy shocks. Macroeconomic policies are analyzed within a CGE framework with few representative households. The main challenges are the microeconomic assumption of representative agent and imposed functional forms used in the distributive and poverty analysis. These challenges are addressed by the MS models which account for thousands of individual or real households and allow for heterogeneity of behavior in response to policy shocks. CGE models are based on consistent national accounts data which capture the interrelation among institutional sectors and the rest of the economy. MS models allow us to compute inequality and poverty measures using individual level data from nationally representative surveys. Combining CGE and MS models also facilitates the estimation of parameters and the calibration of data used by the CGE model. CGE MS models are combined to capture the heterogeneous microeconomic effects of macro or sectoral policies. CGE MS models are used when micro policy reforms or interventions are sizable enough to trigger second order macro effects. Here are the seven principal approaches used to combine CGE and MS models. One, the micro-accounting approach, two, the re-weighting approach, three, the non-parametric approach, four, the top-down behavioral approach, five, the bottom-up behavioral approach, six, the iterative approach, and seven, the fully integrated approach. CGE MS models are grouped into integrated and layered approaches which forms the linkage between the two models. To take into consideration the integration of individual and household reactions to policy shocks, CGE MS models are grouped into behavioral and non-behavioral approaches. Approaches to the CGE MS models are classified according to the linkage between the two models and the integration of individual and household reactions to a policy shock. Most CGE MS models are linked in a layered or sequential manner. Behavioral CGE MS models use the top down behavioral, the bottom up behavioral, and the iterative approaches. The non behavioral CGE MS models use the micro accounting, the re weighting, and the non parametric approaches. We are now going to go into more detail on each of the approaches. In the micro-accounting approach, the changes in factor and product prices are transmitted from the CGE model to the MS model. Household-specific income changes are computed according to factor endowments, labor and capital. The income changes are combined with changes in consumer prices according to household-specific consumption patterns. The micro-accounting approach allows for distributional effects and poverty analysis based on full household survey data. In the micro-accounting approach, individuals and households do not adjust their behavior in response to the price changes. For example, the micro-behavioral response is absent. This approach assesses the immediate or short-term effects of shocks, for example, before agents adjust their behavior. The micro-accounting approach does not allow for a micro-feedback effect in the CGE model.
Here are some examples of studies that use the micro-accounting approach. Gainers and Losers from Trade Reform in Morocco by Revalian and Lakshin, 2004 and Growth and Poverty Impacts of Trade Liberalization in Senegal by Coburn, Karong, De Calloway, Fofana, and Robichaud, 2010. With the reweighting approach, shocks are generated by the CGE model and transmitted to the MS model. Consistency between the two models is created by adjusting the household weights. This approach consists of altering the sample weights in order to reproduce changes in employment and other population variables. The new weights are generated in such a way that new aggregate values of the population for selected variables are reproduced with minimal adjustments to the original weights. In other words, the approach minimizes the distance between new and old weights subject to constraints on aggregate values. The CGE and MS models can be linked through several variables available in both models. For example, employment by region, skill level, sector, gender, age, and occupation. The approach can project population dynamics for several groups of the population, such as region, gender, age, etc. The reweighting approach does not explicitly model labor market behavior. This approach is unable to identify the winners and losers of a macro shock at individual or household levels. It also does not allow for microfeedback effects to the CGE model. Here are some examples of studies that use the reweighting approach. Analyzing Climate Change Mitigation Policies in Australia by Bodemeyer, Ero, Kalb, Van Zyl de Jong, 2008, and Poverty and Regional Inequality in Brazil by Ferreira and Horridge, 2006. The non-parametric approach is used to assess the distributive effects of labor market changes. Changes in aggregate labor market conditions are provided by the CGE model. The approach applies a random selection of employment statuses in the context of segmented labor markets. For example, individuals move in and out of employment and from one employment segment to another based on aggregate labor market changes. Individuals are ranked according to an assigned number drawn randomly from a normal distribution. Individuals move across segments at the margins depending on changes in aggregate labor market conditions. Individuals that change segments are assigned the average labor income of the segment. The randomized process is repeated enough times to generate a confidence interval for the results, Monte Carlo simulation. Although the approach allows a segmentation of the labor market and the possibility for individuals to move from one segment to another, it does not explicitly model labor market behavior. The approach does not allow for microfeedback effects to the CGE model and it has yet to be expanded to capture the distributive effects of changes in non-labor incomes. Here are some examples of studies that use the non-parametric approach. Impact of Cash Transfers to the Poor in Costa Rica by Vos and Sanchez, 2010, and Distributional Effects of Capital Outflows During Argentina's Currency Board Regime by Bivowitz. 2016. The top-down behavioral approach runs the CGE model first and the MS model after. The output of the CGE model is used as input by the MS model. The top-down behavioral approach uses econometric techniques to allow individuals and households to adjust their behavior to a policy change. With this approach, a full reconciliation between the micro and macro data is not required. This approach presents some disadvantages. There is an absence of microfeedback effects to the CGE model. Consistency between the MS and CGE models is required. Changes in the number of workers with respect to the benchmark in the MS and CGE models need to be equal for each labor market segment and changes in average earnings need to be equal for each labor market segment. Finally, changes in the consumption price vector 
must be consistent with the CGE model. Here are some examples of studies that use the top-down behavioral approach. Representative versus Real Households in the Macroeconomic Modeling of Inequality by Bourguignon, Robillard and Robinson, 2005. And the Poverty Impacts of Trade Liberalization in Brazil by Buzolo, Ley and van der Mensbrugge, 2006. In the bottom-up behavioral approach, shocks are implemented by the micro-simulation model first. Then the changes are aggregated and transmitted to the CGE model to capture the economy-wide effects. The approach is applied to policies targeting individual labor supply decisions. It uses econometric techniques to adjust individual labor supply behavior in response to a policy change. The bottom-up behavioral approach lacks a feedback effect from the CGE model to the MS model and the aggregation of the micro-household behavior to make the link between the two models is challenging. The bottom-up behavioral approach has been used in the article The Analysis of a Stylized Policy Reform Designed to Stimulate Labor Supply in Germany by Boeters, Feil, and Gertzken in 2005. In the iterative approach, Shocks are transmitted from one model to the other until the two models converge. Shocks can be implemented from the top, for instance, top-down, bottom-up, or from the bottom, for example, bottom-up, top-down. The iterative approach uses econometric techniques to allow individuals and households to adjust their behavior to a policy change. The link from the CGE model to the MS model is performed with price variables and the feedback from the MS model to the CGE model is performed with volume variables, typically consumption and labor supply. The iterative approach requires a consistency between individual and household behaviors in the CGE and MS models. Convergence between the two models is not always guaranteed and must be verified. Here are some examples of studies that use the iterative approach. Scaling up infrastructure spending in the Philippines by Savard, 2010, and the economy-wide effects of different possible reforms of the child support grant in South Africa by Tiberti, Mazanov, Chitiga, Mabugu, Rubbersho, and Ngandu, 2013. In the fully integrated approach, the few representative households in the CGE model are replaced by all the individual households from a household survey. The structure of the CGE model does not change, but the number of household accounts is increased. The specific income structure and expenditure pattern of individual households allows for greater heterogeneity of policy effects. The approach captures both inter- and intra-group distributional changes. This fully integrated approach is the most theoretically sound approach to conducting micro simulations in a CGE framework, according to Borgogno, Busolo, and Pereira da Silva, 2008. To implement the fully integrated approach, the individual household income is adjusted to match its expenditure and savings. Then, consistency is created between the aggregate incomes and expenditures of the micro and macro households. The data reconciliation procedure between the CGE and the MS models is time-intensive, and computational capacity may be a problem as the number of equations increases with the number of households. There are limitations imposed by the CGE model on which behavioral functional forms can be used. For instance, the discrete types of behavior cannot be easily captured in standard CGE models. Here are some examples of studies that applied the fully integrated approach. Growth, Distribution and Poverty in Madagascar by Cognot and Robillard, 2007, and Trade, Liberalization and Poverty in Nepal by Coburn, 2006. Comparing the MS behavioral approach and the MS non-parametric approach, Debowitz 2016 
found the distributional effects of the capital outflows faced by the Argentinian economy at the end of its currency board are not significantly different between the two approaches. In comparing the behavioral and the reweighting microsimulation approaches, Hero, 2010, concludes that the two approaches delivered similar results when applied to the issue of trade liberalization in South Africa. The behavioral approach is the most commonly used in combining CGE and MS models. However, researchers should pay attention to the consistency between the macro and micro data and the mechanisms by which feedback effects are passed between the macro and micro models, according to Colombo, 2018. Researchers can use the non-parametric and the reweighting approach when time and or data limitations preclude them from using the behavioral approach. However, more evidence is still needed to guide researchers on the choice of an adequate approach. The top-down behavioral approach runs the CGE model first and the MS model after. The output of the CGE model is used as input by the MS model. However, the output from the MS model is not transmitted to the CGE model. The top-down behavioral approach uses econometric techniques to allow individuals and households to adjust their behavior to a policy change. Consistency between the MS and CGE models is required. Changes in the number of workers with respect to the benchmark in the MS and CGE models needs to be equal for each labor market segment and change in average earnings needs to be equal for each labor market segment. As well, changes in the consumption price vector must be consistent with the CGE model. However, in the top-down behavioral approach, a full reconciliation between the micro and macro data is not required. The implementation of the top-down approach, TDB, requires micro data from a nationally representative household survey, which includes socioeconomic characteristics of individuals and households, labor market status and labor incomes, and household consumption expenditures. Also required is simulated changes in the number of workers and average employment earnings for each labor market segment and the changes in household budgets from the CGE model. Thus, the approach links CGE and MS models through the labor market and the consumption expenditures of the representative household groups captured by the CGE model. The consistency between the MS and CGE models requires changes in the number of workers needs to be equal for each labor market segment. Changes in average employment needs to be equal for each labor market segment. And finally, changes in the consumption price vector must be consistent with the CGE model. The TDB approach is implemented in three steps. In the first step, employment statuses and employment incomes are estimated. In the second step, household consumption expenditures are predicted, and in the third step, distributive and poverty analyses are performed. The objective of the first step is to estimate the changes in household incomes due to changes in individual employment statuses and earnings. The methodology consists of estimating the individual employment status, for example, wage worker, self-employed worker, etc., and predicting income from employment activities, including estimation of wages at the individual level and estimation of income from self-employment activities at a household level. The estimation of individual employment statuses consists of identifying the labor categories. The categorization of workers can be based on individual educational skills, for example, skilled if they had completed primary education, and unskilled if primary school was not completed. Identifying the occupational choices, occupational decision. Occupational decisions are determined by individual and household characteristics and each choice is exclusive. For example, wage worker, self-employed worker, not working, as in unemployed or inactive. Identifying a suited function for the occupational choice in general, discrete choice models are used, such as a simple logit model 
or a multinomial logit model. Estimating the individual labor supply, meaning the individual probabilities of being in one of the employment categories using the selected function, and reconciling the employment statuses in the CGE and MS models using one of the following techniques, job queuing approach, Coburn et al., 2017, changing the intercepts of the behavioral equations of the MS model, Robillard et al., 2008, and imposing consistency equations, Colombo, 2010. Predicting income from employment activities consists of estimating a two-step wage model. This could be a Heckman model in which selection equations are estimated in step one and wage equations in step two, and the changes in average wages, for example the total payroll, in the CG and MS models are reconciled. Identifying the economic sectors, for example agricultural versus non-agricultural sectors, identifying a suited function for the profit, for example instrumental variable approach using a Cobb-Douglas function, and estimating the profit function at the household level, Dividing the estimated household profit by the total number of self-employed individuals in the household and reconciling the changes in net income from self-employment activities in the CGE and MS models by economic sector. Total household income equals total wages of all the labor categories and total income from self-employment activities in all sectors and private remittances exogenous and public transfers exogenous. Step 2. Household consumption expenditures. The objective of the second step is to estimate the after simulation per capita consumption in constant prices. The methodology consists of computing the initial per capita consumption from the survey by aggregating purchases, self-consumption, and gift values over all household consumption categories, including the real or imputed value of rent for housing, and after, mapping the categories of product available in the CGE and MS models. Then, applying the changes in household incomes, derived in step one, to the initial per capita consumption to generate the after simulation per capita consumption. Next, Using the same demand system in the CGE and MS models, computing a household-specific price index using the concept of equivalent income, King, 1983. And finally, deflating the after-simulation per capita consumption by the household-specific price index to generate the after-simulation per capita consumption in constant prices. According to King, 1983, for a given budget constraint, the equivalent income of household H, living in cluster C, in each period T, is defined as the income level that, at the reference price system P to R, yields LS1, the same utility level as attained with consumption X underscore HC and prices P underscore C. V underscore period is the indirect utility function and E is the equivalent income function specific to the household H. To define the equivalent income through the expenditure function, let's assume P to R is equal to P to R0, where LS2 P to R0 represents the vector of prices faced by households living in the reference cluster or region, select the reference region at the base year, for instance, before the policy reform. By following King, 1983, the change in household welfare, equivalent gain or EG, after the policy reform, where T is equal to 1, is given by the below equation. If EG underscore HC is less than 0, then a transfer to household H equal to EG underscore HC would compensate the impacts of the reform. Step 3. Distributive and poverty analyses are performed. The distributive analyses computes and compares income distributions in the base year and after policy simulations. Poverty and inequality measurements are conducted. 
For poverty analyses, Foster Green Thorbeck FGT indices are the most commonly used. For inequality analyses, Gini and Atkinson indices are the most commonly used. An introduction to poverty and inequality measurements is provided by Revelian, 1994, and Duclos, 2002. Coburn, 2005, proposes procedures for conducting poverty or distribution analysis of CGE microsimulation results with DAD. The freely available DAD software uses the vectors of household or individual level measures of income or consumption expenditure to compute the standard distributional indicators and to graph standard distributional curves. To conduct distributive and poverty analysis using DAD, the requirements are household level data from a nationally representative survey to extract household identifiers, sample weights, household grouping variables, and initial household incomes or consumption expenditures, and after simulation household level income or consumption expenditure vectors generated from the MS model. We are at the end of this course on CGE MS modeling for distributive and poverty analysis with a focus on the top-down behavioral approach. Throughout the course, you have been introduced to the CGE MS models, more specifically why and how CGE and MS models are combined, and an overview of the various approaches of integrating CGE and MS models was provided. Then we presented the top-down behavioral approach with detailed information on its characteristics, the requirements, and key steps to implement the model. The course ended with the presentation of a technique to conduct a distributive analysis using the simulation results from the CGE-MS models.